Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So ever since I filmed the full face of first impressions video, you guys have seemed to really enjoy it. And a lot of you guys also requested the full face of first impressions using all drugstore makeup. So guess what we're going to be doing today? We're going to be doing full face of first impressions using all drugstore makeup. Alright, so without further ado, let's get started with the video. Bring you guys closer, of course. So I've just washed and moisturized my face. I have some new friends growing over here, but that's because it was actually my birthday yesterday. So the last few days I've been going out, passing out, um, and I haven't been that great with my skincare regimen. So let's try to ignore that. So for primer today, I've got the Milani Prime Perfection Face Primer Hydrating Plus Pore Minimizing. I've heard great things about this. Just to read some claims, it's supposed to create a smooth canvas before applying any foundation. It hydrates skin and creates a natural finish. It reduces redness and appearance of enlarged pores. Lightweight, non-greasy feel, and it does not clog pores. I am very excited for this because all of the claims seems like something that I really desperately need right now. <laughs> Let's see. Ooh, kind of looks like just like a regular moisturizer. Doesn't smell like anything. Actually, it does. This kind of smells like plastic. It smells not too strong though, so I think it's okay. So that went on pretty well. It doesn't seem to have diminished my pores as well as my um, Makeup Forever Pore Smoothing Primer, but it does feel hydrating, so I guess I guess that's good. It feels pretty good on the skin. It doesn't leave any sticky residue, so that's pretty good. It's very smooth. But the pores don't seem to be as diminished as what I like. This is a really weird face. And some of my redness still seems to peek through. So I don't think it did much with that either. Right off the bat, I'm going to give this a 6 out of 10. Because it definitely does feel hydrating. It feels smoother, I guess. But not smooth completely. For claiming to hydrate and minimize the pores because it's doing half of the job, I would give it a 6 out of 10. So for foundation today, I'm very excited to try this because everyone here on YouTube have been raving and raving about this and I'm finally trying this out. This is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation in Soft Ivory. It claims to help eliminate white particle reflection um, pretty much when you take photos, all the flashbacks, it's supposed to diminish that. Let's try this. How do you open this? Oh, I don't like that. So obviously this is a little downfall because everybody always prefers pumps. Like always, I'll apply one side of my face with a brush and the other side with a beauty blender. Oh, this actually looks a little light. I'm kind of worried. Whoops. I have my final birthday dinner to go to, so I'm really hoping this works. Oh gosh, please work. Like always, I'll be using the Morphe E44 brush. This is my favorite brush ever for foundation. <laughs> this looks so light. What were you thinking, Christina? They had like 50 shades of gray. <laughs> Hopefully I can make it work with my bronzer. Hopefully. Ignoring the color, the coverage seems to be about a medium coverage, just right off the bat. Um, it didn't have any claims of what the coverage would be. I think it just said like buildable coverage or something. It went on really easily. It wasn't hard to blend. It didn't like settle in anywhere. Um, it feels a little sticky. Like, I feel like it hasn't set yet, so I'll probably definitely have to set this with a powder. I'm going to apply the other side with a beauty blender. So it was definitely a lot faster and easier to apply slash blend with the beauty blender. Coverage is definitely better with a brush. It's definitely a sheer to light coverage with the beauty blender but it just looks like my skin, but better. I would probably prefer this if I were to ever want to look like I 
woke up like this. What I think I'll do is apply a second layer here just to see if the coverage is buildable with a brush. And then I'll probably blend it out with a beauty blender to see if it does the same effect of how it did. Oh my goodness, this even set quickly too. So besides the fail on the color that I decided to choose, I think the foundation looks great. It looks very natural and smooth. I'd say the coverage was buildable, but you would probably have to apply it with a brush to build it up to uh, more of a high medium coverage. I wouldn't say it goes all the way up to full coverage um, to my standard. My skin definitely does look blurred, so I get the photo focus concept. Ignoring the total fail on my foundation shade because that was my fault. But because a pump is always preferred, I'm going to give it a 8 out of 10. Moving on to concealer, I'm kind of worried right now because my concealer actually might be darker than my foundation. Like my foundation color right now is pretty much what I would use for my concealer. So for concealer, I have the Milani Retouch and Erase Concealer in number 02 Light. I haven't even taken it out from the packaging yet, so let's go ahead and do that. So it comes in this really cute little tube with a sponge applicator on top. I'm really curious to see how that works because I'm usually not a fan of that. The only thing I like with the sponge tip is the Maybelline Dark Circle Eraser. So I'm wondering if it's going to apply like that. Since my dark circle is starting to look really scary, especially with this pale face going on, let's go ahead and jump right into the concealer. Squeeze it. Oh, there we go. And yep, the concealer is definitely... <gasps> I don't know how this is going to work. Alright, so this is what we have going on right now. I'm going to try and blend this side with a brush, and I'm going to try and blend this with a beauty blender. It's got some really good coverage. Wow, that totally covered up my zit that I had going on there. I like that. Alright, let's try the Beauty Blender side. It definitely blended a lot better with the Beauty Blender because it also took away some product. But that definitely made it look a lot more natural and less lifted. Although this side seemed to have a better coverage, it just hasn't sunk into my skin yet, so it looks lifted. So I'm going to blend that out with my Beauty Blender. I like the concealer. The sponge tip applicator was kind of useless because I don't think I would ever blend it with this. But I get the idea of applying it directly with a sponge tip so it's a lot gentler. So I'm going to give this concealer a 9 out of 10. To set everything, I'm going to use the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Press Powder. I've also heard a lot of people rave about this. This is pretty much supposed to do the same thing as the foundation. It's supposed to eliminate the flashback um, and also give you a blurred face, kind of like the blurred photo effect. So let's hope for the best. I'm going to use my Morphe E52 brush. My lips are looking all sorts of nasty. So I generally don't like to set underneath my eyes with a powder foundation or a pressed powder. So I actually set underneath my eyes with my good old Cover FX Perfect Setting Powder. But I did set the rest of my face with the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Press Powder. I think I definitely like this powder because it was so fine. It set down ever so gently that I felt like nothing was on there and it was just really soft and I even when I feel it right now it just feels so natural. I don't feel anything on my skin. Typically when I set my foundation with another pressed powder it does feel like it does start to feel like there is something going on but this almost feels like it was a loose powder and it was just so gentle that I really like it. I'm going to give this a 10 out of 10. So I just realized I haven't picked out any new eyebrow products to show you guys, so I just went ahead and did my eyebrows. Moving on to eyeshadow, I'm pretty excited for this one too. This is the e.l.f. Matte for Matte Eyeshadow Palette, and it looks like this. Let me open it up. I 
think there were like four or five other palettes, but I chose the Mad for Mad palette because just from looking at the colors here, this is pretty much something that I would use on a regular day basis. All right, so the palette looks like this. I definitely like the packaging because it's one of those where it doesn't leave a finger mark on the packaging. You can see from the reflection. Ooh, this is pretty sturdy for an e.l.f. palette. Not judging, but I would have guessed that it would be just cheap plastic. It has a little bit of weight. I, I like that. The colors also seem to look very promising. I really like this palette so far just from the packaging and just from looking at it. I'm also really excited that I get to use the mirror here. That's really nice. Ooh, my foundation's starting to look really nice. All right, guys, let's go ahead and give this shadow a go. I primed my eyelids earlier with the concealer, so I'm good on that, but you can totally choose to use um, a separate eyeshadow primer. I'm going to go ahead and start with this shade right here. It's slight, very slightly chalky, but I'm not hating. I'm trying to go for a pretty simple look today. I'm going to go ahead and use that shade right there. I'm going to use a much more dense brush. This is the Sigma Buff and Blend E39 brush. Doesn't really like to layer on top of each other. I mean, I guess it's okay. It might be the concealer that I used as a primer because I'm guessing if I were to use the primer I regularly use, like the color payoff would be much more vibrant. But it's still pretty darn good for a $15 drugstore eyeshadow palette. Next, I'm going to use this shade right here. Yeah, I feel like I'm slightly struggling trying to blend all the colors together. But again, that might be because of the primer because I didn't use a proper primer and I used a concealer instead. So I'm not gonna hate on this palette just yet. Honestly, I was trying to go with a much, much, much more natural look than this, but because I was slightly struggling to blend it together, it kind of became a much more smokier look than I anticipated. <laughs> but I'm not hating, I mean, I always love a warm smoky eye who hates a warm smoky eye all right i've gathered my thoughts and i've decided to give this palette a 8 out of 10. i absolutely love the packaging it's so sturdy and i mean i hate to say this but for being an elf palette you would have thought that it would be a much more cheaper quality of kind of uh, packaging but it's really not. It's got a good weight to it. The colors are amazing. I'm totally going to enjoy all of these colors. I would probably have to play with this palette again with different primers because I was slightly struggling blending the colors. It was just a tad bit patchy, slightly chalky, but it's not to a point where I hate this palette for it. I'm also kind of bummed that this isn't like a black. It's more of a darker gray, but I will definitely play with this palette again and I will update you guys on either my Snapchat or on my Instagram. Moving on to eyeliner, I have two here, both from Essence, and you already know they're both going to be a pen liner because that's pretty much all I'll use. One of them is a extra long-lasting eyeliner, and the other one is a eyeliner pen that's waterproof. They're both pretty identical to each other, but just one claims to be waterproof and one just claims to last longer. I think I'm going to try and use the extra long-lasting eyeliner because I want to see what the difference is compared to a waterproof liner. Let's give this a try. The brush tip is pretty thick. I don't know if I like that because look how messy it is. I mean, it's slightly patchy over here, but it's still super rich and black. It kind of has that shiny reflect that I usually don't like from a pen liner. Let me see if this patch is refillable. I also realized you can't work in straight motion. You have to kind of work in little strokes because 
once you kind of create the long straight line that's when it starts to get a little patchy and starts forming these empty blank spaces so i would recommend it to work in you know small strokes which is something that i usually do anyways but i feel like you would have to do double the work to fill up those empty spaces and the little patches so i would give this liner a 6 out of 10. I'm going to curl my lashes. So for mascara today, I'm going to be using LA Girls new Oomph Mascara and this one is in maximum volume. It claims to be a clump free one coat formula that creates maximum volume without weighing down lashes. The brush is interesting too. It narrows by the tip and the brush is like toothbrush bristles. Let's give this a try. Honestly, it's not really doing much to my lashes. It's also not lifting my lashes. Yeah, that's actually weighing down my lashes. It's not lifting. It feels pretty heavy on my eyes. It honestly really didn't do anything to my lashes. Let me try and curl the other side one more time to see if that'll make a difference. I'm gonna try it again on the other side. I mean, I just spent like a good 10 minutes on this eyelash. It honestly doesn't look like it did anything. It's not even lifting. There's absolutely no volume, no length. I'm so disappointed. I had high hopes for this mascara. All right, I'm not even gonna bother doing my bottom lashes with this mascara. I'm going to give this mascara a two out of 10. It really didn't do anything. I did enjoy the narrow tip because that really does make it easier for the inner corner but it honestly didn't do anything it claimed to do so 2 out of 10. Moving on to finishing the rest of my face, I have the Physicians Formula Highlight and Contour Palette. It's their bronze and boosting collection. They had another one where it was more shimmery, but I usually don't apply anything shimmery as a bronzer or to contour with. So I got the matte version, which I'm really excited about because that shade in the middle right there. So it looks like this, but when you open up the uh, palette, there's a brush underneath. I honestly don't think I'll be using that brush because I just, I'm just not even gonna bother. I'm gonna try and mix these two to contour my face and I will be using my Morphe E4 brush to do that. Do a little bit of that. That's a little too red. It does blend out very smoothly. It's definitely pigmented. I'm gonna use more of the shade in the middle because I think reddish brown shade is a little too red for me. I'm literally going ham with this bronzer because I'm so white. I seriously wish that mascara worked. My eyes look empty. So that bronzer definitely helped give color back into my face. I think my foundation is actually starting to look better now. I'm gonna use the middle shade to contour my nose. All right, now I'm going to use that shade right there to kind of blend everything out. So this palette was definitely a plus for me. I think I'm gonna really enjoy using this, especially for my nose contour. So I'm going to give this palette a nine out of 10. All right, for blush today, I have the Makeup Revolution Matte Blush, and this is in the color Nude. If I end up liking this, girl, I am going to stock up on every shade they have. So the blush looks like this. Um, obviously, the packaging isn't the greatest. It's just a pretty cheap plastic material. There's also a lot of little scratch marks on the front because I guess a lot of people um, have been picking up and putting it back down and whatnot. I might have just picked up like a really old one. Let's give this blush a try. I'm going to be using my Morphe E53 brush. Oh, that is so pigmented. Oh my goodness. I was not expecting that. I'm working on trying to blend it because I was not expecting that much color payoff. Okay, honestly, I was not expecting that. That was super pigmented. I think I really like this color too. Actually, this is a really good everyday shade. 
I'm gonna definitely be picking up some other shades to try because that was super pigmented and I really really like how it applied. I'm going to give this blush a 9 out of 10 because it was super affordable and the color payoff was just amazing. I was really shook. For highlight today, I have another Makeup Revolution product and this is their Vivid Vake Vake. Vivid Bake Highlighter in the shade Radiant Light. I initially wanted the more golden undertone, but they were sold out of it, and I thought this was a pretty nice color too, so I'm going to give this one a try. So this is how it looks like. Um, again, the packaging is just plastic. Um, the front also has some scratches on there. Alright, so for this highlight, I'm going to use my Morphe M509 brush. Oh my... Woo! Do you guys see that? Oh my goodness, I've never experienced that much highlight. Why am I just discovering all these amazing affordable highlights now? Oh my goodness. Now I need to go and hunt down the golden one because I'm going to be even more shook. Okay, are you serious? This is blinding me. If the lights ever go out of my house, I'm just going to bust out this highlight because I'm going to be glowing from within. This for sure took me by surprise. I was not expecting that. I'm usually not a big fan of like a pinkish undertone kind of a reflect, but I'm totally enjoying this. So I'm going to give this an 11 out of 10. It exceeded my expectations and I'm going to be loving this for the rest of my life. Moving on to the lips, we have the Wet n Wild Mega Last Liquid Catsuit Matte Lipstick in the color... Nudist Peach. I even love the name. Nudist Peach is just something that I would already love. I've heard mixed reviews about this uh, liquid lipstick, but nevertheless, I needed to try it myself. So here I am. So the brush tip looks like any other typical liquid lipstick dome brushes. It seems to have a little rounded dent on the brush tip. Um, I think it's made so that when you're applying it, it rounds out to the shape of your lips. So. I like the idea. I'm just wondering if it'll actually be worth it. All right, here we go. You can still see through my lips and on the tip, it's not fully covered. So I'm definitely going to be needing a second layer. It dried pretty fast. It still has a little bit of a sticky residue. Yeah, even with the second layer, it's still patchy. Oh, and actually the second layer is starting to feel really dry. And because I'm rubbing off the areas that are already dry, that's creating another patch. I mean, the color is really beautiful. I don't think I want to do a third layer because my lips already feel super dry and cracky and it's settling into every single crevices. All right guys, that completes this look today. I totally enjoyed playing around with all of these new products. There were definitely some new gems that I found and some fails obviously, but nevertheless, it's always fun playing around with makeup and discovering new uh, good and the bads and it's just, makeup's just fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments down below what you guys would like to see next. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!